Good morning. Good morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to the worship of God at Wallingford Presbyterian Church. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you so much for coming. Well, we have a lot to do today, so we better get started. Here's a few announcements as we begin. We have two things happening after church. For the children who are here this morning, hi guys. We actually have Kids Cafe, which is our once a month children's coffee hour. So please join us in the choir room right after the service, and we'll have some kid-friendly snacks and some singing, okay? From 11 to 11.15. Then for all of you adults, you need to stay too because we have a special offering. At 11.15, meet in the reception room by the maps. And our church historian, Roger, oh, what did I say? Oh, thank you. In the fellowship hall, not the reception room, in the fellowship hall, um, our church historian, Roger Demas, is going to lead us on a walking tour of the church to learn about the history of Wallingford and the building and how there was additions and when these things happened. Very cool. So come at 1115, meet at the maps. We also have an electronic sign open house today in the sanctuary from 1 to 3 p.m. if you are interested. And a progressive dinner is this Saturday, so sign yourself up in the fellowship hall. Did I say that? Yeah, that is right. And please go ahead and sign our Black Friendship Pew Pad so we can get to know each other better. And now, if you are an April baby, hands up. Anyone an April baby? Oh, one, two. Great. Oh, wonderful. Well, we would love to sing happy birthday to you. Please sing along. Miss Lee's going to play on the piano. We have our wonderful, slightly different happy birthday lyrics. So we begin today with a reading from the Gospel according to Mark. In this season of Eastertide, and just like Christmas, Christmas begins the season, it doesn't end the season. Easter begins the season, it doesn't end at Easter. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so they so that they might go and anoint him, meaning Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Good morning. If you are able, please stand and join me for the call to worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hope is alive. A new age is dawning. Joy is alive. Redemption is here. Love is alive. Death cannot harm us. We are alive. New life is within us. The church is alive. Celebrate 
you. Let us worship God. You may be seated. Even the obstacle of death has been removed between us and God. If death no longer stands in our way, we can be sure that our sin does not either. Let us confess our sins that they may be washed away by the mercy of our risen Lord. Loving God, we confess that at times we do not share in the joy of the resurrection, but are caught in the worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but remain discontent, grumbling, and anxious. Forgive us for not sharing in the good news. Forgive us when we find it more comfortable to worry and complain than to risk the joy of new life in Christ. Call us back to your ways, O God, to seek hope and reconciliation, restoration and peace. In the name of the risen Christ we pray. Amen. Christ is risen. The stone is rolled away. The tomb found empty. Mary calls out, I have seen the Lord. We have seen Christ too, in every helping hand, in every heartfelt gift, in every choice to restore life in this world. You are forgiven. Accept your forgiveness and know that God loves you and desires great joy for your life. Walk forward on this journey of faith, knowing your brothers and sisters are with you. Alleluia. Amen. What will we do with this good news? We will be an Easter people, full of light, love, and joy. We will reach out with our hands and hearts to serve others and heal the world as we have been healed. We will forgive as we have been forgiven and never forget to be thankful for what Christ has done for us.
Amen. You may be seated. And now is our time with young disciples. So I invite any children who are here this morning to come meet me up front. We have a little story time. Hi. Hi. Hello. You can go ahead and sit right there. sit with us. Yeah, we're right here. Is that good? Right there? Hi. I think we have some new friends today. My name is Taylor. I'm so happy to see you guys. Thank you for coming up front. You're very brave. Yes, you're very brave. Sometimes I like to tell a story about how when I was your guys' age, I sat in the front pew and um, behind the little wall there, and I was too nervous to go around the side and sit up front. And I was right there. I was like right there where Miss Sally's sitting, and I was too nervous to go forward. And I said, Ma, Ma, I can hear it from here. And my mom would say, go up front. Ma, I can hear it from here. So, but, but it was because I was afraid. So when you guys come up, I want you to know you're even braver than me. Yes, you are. Okay, so... Last week, we had an Easter pageant, and so many of you were in it, and so many of you watched it. So this week, we're going to relax. Yes, we're just going to have a nice story. And this is called a very happy Easter prayer. Okay, what are we going to pray about? Let's see. There's all kinds of nice little springtime animals. So let's read together. Hello there, yellow daffodils. You're here to welcome spring. It's time to say a prayer to God for all the hope he brings. Thank you, God, for budding trees. They'll soon be dressed in flowers. You help the earth begin again with puddle-making showers. Thank you, God, for gentle breezes dancing through my hair. I praise you for the gift of life you put in springtime air. Thank you, God, for bluebirds and their cheerful morning chatter, for dandelions' fuzzy heads that catch the wind and scatter. Thank you, God, for promises you make to every heart. Forgiveness comes through Jesus. Each day is a brand new start. Thank you, God, for blue sky days. The sun will warm the ground. Critters snuggled in their nests wake up and romp around. Thank you, God, for bees that buzz from one bloom to another, excited by the petals painted in their springtime color. Thank you, God, for hopping frogs announcing spring has come. The woodland sounds the chorus when their rivets have begun. Thank you, God, for heaven's love and how you chose to show it. Jesus came to give his life so all the world would know it. Thank you, God, for fluffy bunnies bouncing to and fro. Hop, hop, hop. They just won't stop. They're happy head to toe. Thank you, God, for outdoor fun, adventures everywhere, from flying kites to riding bikes to picnics we can share. Thank you, God, for Easter morning. Joyful news is here. Jesus lives forever, and his love is always near. Amen? Amen. Well, thank you guys for praying this happy Easter prayer with me. Yes, I hope you have a wonderful Easter tide. Can you say Easter tide? Time. Wow, that's the time after Easter, where it's basically like the church doesn't want to stop celebrating. We just want to keep the party going for weeks and weeks and weeks. We can't stop. So we're going to keep on celebrating Easter in all these fun ways, right? The good news that Jesus is alive and loves you very, very much. He loves you just the way you are. Okay, how about we do an Easter prayer? So we'll do an echo prayer. So I'll say it. And you say it after me. Does that sound good? Okay, let's close our eyes. 
and our friends in the congregation can help, okay? Dear God, Thank you for the good news of Easter. Thank you for the good news of Easter. Thank you for new life in Jesus. Thank you for new life. Help us to share this light with everyone we meet. Help us to share this light with everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys again you were so brave thank you for coming forward and i'll see you in a little bit okay you can come to kids cafe but now you can go to sunday school if you'd like okay yes thank you good job this morning So now I'd like to share with you a poem. And Lee's kind enough to play some music in the background. This is a poem by John Updike. He calls it The Seven Stanzas of Easter. Make no mistake, if he rose at all, it was as his body. If the cell's dissolution did not reverse, the molecule re-knit, the amino acids rekindle, the church will fall. It was not as the flowers, each soft spring recurrent. It was not as his spirit in the mouths and fuddled eyes of the 11 apostles. It was as his flesh, ours, the same hinged thumbs and toes, the same valved heart that pierced, died, withered, paused, and then regathered out of enduring might, new strength to enclose. Let us not mock God with metaphor, analogy, sidestepping, transcendence, making of the event a parable, a sign painted in the faded crudility of earlier ages. Let us walk through the door. The stone is rolled back, not paper mache, not a stone in a story, but the vast rock of materiality that in the slow grinding of time will eclipse for each of us the wide light of day. And if we have an angel at the tomb, make it a real angel, weighty with Max Planck's quanta, vivid with hair, opaque in the dawn light, robed in real linen, spun on a definite loom. Let us not seek to make it less monstrous, for our own convenience, our own sense of beauty, lest awakened in one unthinkable hour, we are embarrassed by the miracle and crushed by remonstrance. Our second scripture today will be from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 22. Hear now the word of the Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, He showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, 
receive the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, choir. Will you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So last week, I led the 8 o'clock outdoor service, and Pastor Francois said, you should use that next week. So if you were there at the 8 o'clock service last week, this is the same message. (laughs) But I did tweak it to Eastertide. So let's see what we have here. You know how I love to start with a story. Once upon a time. It's my favorite way to start. Well, here we go. Once upon a time, on a misty morning, a few women got up early. That's how the story of new creation began. A few women just getting up early. I love that. But someone got up earlier, right? (laughs) Well, they rubbed their eyes, and their eyes were still red from crying the night before. They bent down to put on their shoes and met up to walk to a place of death, not knowing how to get inside. 
And how poetic. They wanted to go in to the place of death in order to bring anointing in, but they did not know how they would get inside. And they went, still not knowing. Who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb for us, they asked. Who will let us in? And isn't this the very question our souls cry out to this day? Who will open it for us? This tomb of death, who can break it open? How can we bring anointing in? Who will roll it away? In the midnight of the soul, we still wonder this question. Who will roll away this prison of death so that healing might be brought in? Who will set us free from the captivity of our darkness? We are not strong enough, and we know it, and they knew it. But they still went. They still went. Pat, 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 pat. I can hear their footsteps on the dirt path, walking quietly and solemnly, in the darkness, hoping not to come against any authorities along the way, a mixture of mourning and hypervigilance, a crude concoction of anguish and apprehension. Is that not the state of our hearts when our Savior is dead? Is that not the path that our souls are bent to when left to their own devices? We are them. We are them without him. A crude concoction of anguish and apprehension. Pat, 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 until the steps stop. And not even the birds are singing at this point. And the silence is deafening, and they see someone there in the shadows of a rock rolled away, and a voice so peaceful utters a few words. Do not be amazed. The voice echoes. We think it's our teacher at first, but getting closer, it's a being too bright for our eyes, illuminating now the emptiness of the inner room, again with a voice so strange that it doesn't belong on the frequencies of earth. The being says, you are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who has been crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See, here is the place where they have laid him. And with heavenly echoes, the voice somehow warms us from within, but also freezes us with fear. We leave and tell no one. You know, the being had given us three commands, and only one we had followed. Do not be amazed. Truly, we were. Tell the disciples we could not. But go, this we could do. To walk this journey from within to without the city walls with the Marys is one that Christians have walked many times, and you yourself have walked many an Easter tide. And yet today, the week after Easter, we consider now the walk from the tomb. And rather, I see the latter as a run from the tomb. For what they had encountered was so truly shocking that it overtook them with terror. The Greek here says ephagon, which means ran away or escaped. It seems like they were running for their lives, right? But why was this if it were happy news? Why would they run away? One preacher I heard explain this best. He said, the women were fearful because their world had been turned upside down, right? We don't blame them. But because the one thing, the only thing that you can count on in this life is that dead people stay dead. Normally, we as people are afraid when we see something that shouldn't be there, right? 
like a stranger following us or a bear in the road, something that is there that shouldn't be there. That's normally what scares us. However, on this pivotal morning, they were afraid because something or rather someone was not there that should have been there. And that one simple, eerily strange absence changed not only the course of their lives, but the course of human history. Because the dead stay dead. Everything else can change, but there's no changing that. They fled for their lives because that one fact had shattered their whole conception of reality. And their world was falling down around them. They ran, and questions began to spiral in their minds. How can this be? What happened? Who was that man? And what do we do now? Breathless, they run. And even now, we are still breathless, but not out of fear. Instead, out of awe of what this means. As the days and years passed, the disciples began to see all that the resurrection meant for them. Everything was clicking in a place. It was not just that the Messiah was alive, but the implications of this rising reached far beyond the highest heights. It spanned wider than the earth's waters, and even as far as the beginning and end of all time. And so before we close, I want us to see in a mirror dimly the opposite of Christ's last words. We won't look at his seven last words, but instead the seven benefits of his resurrection. Next year, I really want to do the seven first words of the resurrected Christ, but that's John, so that'll be a different year. Seven benefits this year. But I couldn't stop at seven, you know? I couldn't stop. I mean, do you know me at all? I'm going to keep chattering, chattering on. <laughs> so please don't count. Don't count them, okay? But let's see exactly what this means for you. Just listen. The benefits of the resurrection. No longer being doubtful about the identity of Christ, you know him as Lord. Christ is Lord. No longer does death have any sting, but death is swallowed up in victory and merely a gateway to heaven. No longer fearful of the hereafter, you are guaranteed a bodily resurrection like his. No longer separated from the Godhead due to sin, you are now reconciled through Christ's blood. No longer alone. You have the risen Christ interceding for you. He lives in you. No longer consigned to a life of sin. You're free to live as he taught you and given new life. No longer fearful of the devil or fearful of evil because we know that both of them have been conquered. No longer burdened by the curse of sin. Now your sin is atoned for once and for all and has been paid for by his blood. No longer fearful of hell. Hell was on the cross itself. And all that awaits you is the loving, welcoming arms of your Father. No longer working for righteousness. His victory is yours. No longer having to face your punishment. You're offered forgiveness of sins. No longer being dead in your sin. You are alive in Christ. No longer being despondent. You have a living hope. No longer condemned. You are considered righteous before the throne. In the great exchange, you're wearing his cloak of righteousness. No longer being a slave to sin. You are set free and sanctified. No longer being under judgment. You are now seated in the heavenly places. No longer prisoners of sin. You have been adopted and your sons and daughters of the Most High. Amen. I'm not really in the business of shock and all. You know, I think that's kind of a cheap trick. But I did go ahead and throw that all before you to take your breath away a little bit because you need to know and I, you need to hear it plainly laid out for you. No one's gonna walk up to you and tell you all of this, what Easter meant for you. I have to, you have to hear it, that this was all done for you. Because if you don't know it, what are we celebrating on Easter? You need to know that this good news is for you. 
So as we go, let us run breathless into this new reality from a tomb we could have never opened or emptied ourselves into the light of heaven on earth, knowing that it was all done for you. Yes, you, the sinful, broken, hurting, complicated, specific you. And maybe we couldn't obey the angel in not being afraid. But maybe now we could obey his other commands to go, to tell, and meet him as he is always and ever will be going ahead of us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is because he lives that we have life. It is because he rose that we too will have a resurrection like his. Bursting with the joy of Easter, let us now give back to the God who stopped at nothing to give us everything. I now invite the ushers to come forward to receive our morning offering. Let us pray. Resurrected Lord, you make all things new. Breathe new life into us, our church, community, and world. May these offerings bring healing and newness to all those who need it, so that we can participate in your kingdom of peace here on earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, please be seated.
God is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you our thanks and our praise, O God. You created the world by speaking life into being. You sent Jesus, your Son, to walk in the way of life that we might follow. He rose again in victory because the powers of death cannot overcome the divine power of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth, <coughs> Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, God, for the incredible gift of Jesus, the Word made flesh. Through his resurrection life, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new people. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in a breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come, come again. again. Yes, our Lord has risen and will come again. And in this in-between time, we continue to cry out for the stones of this world to be rolled away. Lord, in your power, roll away the stone of violence, war, and oppression, and set free the peoples, nations, and lands where there is suffering and mourning. Roll it away and reveal your peace. Roll away the stone of hatred and racism, discrimination and division in our world. Roll it away and reveal to us only unity and love. Roll away the stone of loneliness, isolation, mourning and depression. Roll it away and reveal to us community, shalom, wholeness, and healing. Roll them all away, Lord, and in your resurrection power, offer us newness of life this day. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these and gifts of bread and wine, so that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ, by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father. So you all know that if it were up to me, the table would be in the center of the sanctuary and we would all be gathering around the table, a worldwide table, because that's where Jesus came to his disciples, that's where he met them in the midst of who they were, in the midst of their brokenness, in the midst of their lives, in the midst of the complexity of what it means to be human. And he did a simple act that we do every single day. He broke bread. He gave thanks to God. 
But then he said something very, very special. He said, this is my body, broken for you. Every time you sit at a table, every time you break bread, every time you consume a meal, remember me, remember this. Remember that I have broken myself for you. And then as Pastor Taylor challenged us at the end of her sermon, go, go and live that reality and go and tell that reality. God's broken himself in love for us. Let us remember. Friends, and in the same way, he took the cup. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, this cup is the cup of a new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take it, drink it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. People of God, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord's saving death until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks be to God. body of Christ.
Friends, let us pray. Holy God, thank you, divine crafter of the table, for fashioning us a holy meal, uniting us with the body of Christ. Send us into the world resurrected, refreshed, and ready to share Christ's unconditional love. It is in the name of our resurrected Savior that we pray. Amen. And now, friends, in body or spirit, I invite you to stand and let us sing together. that be our charge, friends, to join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all, the Lord of your life, the Lord of your new life, the Lord of resurrection life. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Alleluia. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. See you next week. <laughs>